Hi, my name is Abriana, also known as Black Girl Writing, and on this channel, we are on the journey to becoming published. Now, I know you read the title. I got bit by a spider last night, aka this morning, and um, it helped me finish my book. And I'm going to explain that because as you can see on my desk, it's kind of a little chaotic. Actually, I want to show you the new and improved tortoise slash writing slash cat room really, really quickly. Okay, so I have my desk and I have some of my books that... I have my desk. I have some of my books that I've gotten from home. The desk has been cleaned off. Here are the notes that I wrote at like 5 o'clock in the morning. We have tortoises. We have our cat tree with no cat. Hey, cats, where are you? Come here. We have cats somewhere in the house. Um, obviously, we have things that we have to like clean up. You know, that's, that's, I don't know what that is. That's going to be gone. Printer and all that stuff. And then secretly, secretly, I hid the cat litter inside the closet, kind of like my old apartment, because like you don't want to see cat litter and all that stuff. Um, so there's a little crack in the door where they can just wiggle on in and swivel on out and um, go about their business. Okay. Um, so on to the topic at hand. I finished my book. Like I, like when I say I finished it and I've like, I understand what I'm officially writing. I officially understand what I'm writing and the message and the journey that all three of my characters are going to go on. And it took me, I think getting bit by a spider to realize this. And I want to say I was bit by a spider because I was sleeping. Well, actually go to the night before. So the night before I had a healthy, healthy, healthy serving of wine. And whenever I drink wine, I get the best sleep. Like I'm sound asleep, no, no interruptions, no turning, no nothing. Like I get the best sound mind sleep and I wake up like just completely just, ah. So anyway, I was sleeping and then I felt like a pain like on my ankle. So I went and I was like, what the fuck was that? And I saw my cat was there, but my cat looked like she was minding her business. Like she looked at me and I looked at her and we made a connection. Like I knew she didn't bite me because I just felt it like right here. You know, like when cats kind of bite you, you know, it kind of it has to come from the side and the front or the side and the top. And I just felt a sting right there. And then long story short, I went to the bathroom. I looked at my ankle. The, the mark or the swelling is down now. I rubbed some alcohol on it. And it was about maybe like, that big and I was like damn I just get bit by a spider but anyway that was like five o'clock in the morning and I was just up I was just up and like for the first time I'm not I'm gonna say in a while like I, I was a little restless I tried to go back to sleep and I was trying to think of some things because um in order for me to sleep I had to think about some things like either like work or, or writing or I'm just making stuff up in my head. When I think about stuff, it helps me go to sleep. I, I couldn't think about anything. Like my mind was blank. It, it made me a little bit restless in a sense. So I got up, I came in here, it was like pitch black. I turned on, well turned on. I had my laptop right here. I popped up my laptop. I put on firework like SMR type of thing. I lit my um, black cherry Merlot. Shout out to mother-in-law because she got me that for my birthday. And I just sat here and I asked myself the question. I know she do not feel like birthday. Excuse me. Yo, you know I'm trying to film the video. Yo, that is the nastiest Okay, I'm back. So I was in, in my writing room. It was pitch black. I lit my candle. I had my computer up. I was listening to um, the noise of the fire. And I just asked myself the question on, what was it? This sticky note, the first one of many, what is Seed of the Soul about? I always had like the broad scope of things, but you know, what was the 
internal message that I'm trying to send. And if it's not an internal message, just what are my three characters' main internal messages? And but then I figured, like before my other video, the backstory. So really, I dove deep. Like I have like five notes on the king, like somewhere in here. I got like five things just on the king himself and how that is affecting my three main characters. And once that came to be, I was like, I was like, oh, fuck, I got it. I, I figured it out. And it just came so clear. Like it was just, it was just peace in my mind. And then it all started coming. I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. And I put that there and that there and that there. And it, oh my gosh, it was like an epiphany. It was beautiful. So to tell you guys now, I have my clock, I have my contract, and I have my crucible. So shout out to Dan Brown and his master class. And he was talking about this in one of his subjects. So, um, and I think that's what I was missing as well. I definitely didn't have a clock. I don't. I didn't have a timeline. I didn't know how fast things were supposed to go. Um, I mapped everything out with these notes. I did like side notes, bringing in characters. And I was just like, oh, this, this is it. I got my attention. It's all happening within five days. Like there's gonna be a battle and everything. Characters don't know it's gonna be a battle, but it is, mm, mm. So I got my clock. Then for my crucible, which is, you know, time is running out. What is going to happen if this does not happen? I figured that out as well. And I figured out how that is going to make all three of my characters, especially my elder sister, Candace, step into her own and I'm just like oh hell yeah oh hell yeah for my contract the promise to the reader so y'all gonna figure out who's doing it and why and what's and when it came to me why he was doing the things he did I was just like it came so clear to why he would do it and it makes sense because people do it in their everyday life and I'm just like Mm, mm, mm. so I'm going to map out my sticky notes onto this cork board and put it up
All right, we are finished with the cork board, so I'm really excited about that. So I literally just mapped out everything that came to me in the order with the sticky notes from this morning. And oh my gosh, you guys, when I tell you, I'm, so, I'm like really, really pumped. I even know like the location now. So the location is going to be called the New City of Bikiza, and you're going to figure out why it's called the New City. Um, I'm just, I, I'm just literally like gearing up. This dog wants to keep barking. So uh, let's go write this first chapter. I'll probably go outside and join the dog because she's just needy. Damn, your feet don't touch What? Your feet don't touch the ground. Yes, they do. I Barely. Do. Your toes. So little. You don't stop talking about me. I like you, though. You know this. So I am back. I'm gonna show you guys how many pages I wrote. I started this at like three and it's now like 6.37 type of thing. So I have written, starting off with canvas. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a little bit of a 10th page for the complete revision redone of chapter one and Candace's point of view. So that's gonna be the end of this video. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. I will be back with another one real soon.